In this video, I'm going to show you a few common modifications you can make to your basic guitar and why you might upgrade. Hi, I'm Dan from onlinebasscourses.com and if this is your first time here and you're interested in weekly bass lessons, then subscribe by hitting the button below. So I'm using this bass guitar to demonstrate this because I have changed pretty much everything that you can possibly change on a bass and there are some reasons behind that, so I'll get to those. But I think that's the first point, is just to have a bass that sounds good to start with. This is a very good way of getting a cheap bass and upgrading to, the, to end up with what is a really nice bass. And you can do that relatively inexpensively if you, if you buy second hand, for example, which you perfectly reasonably can do. So just to demonstrate that, if you just turn the volume down and just play a bass, Now, even in a shop if you're doing this, that's a good starting point because you can kind of feel and hear the resonance of the bass. And if at that point you like what you, you hear but you're not that enamoured with the electrics and the pickups, things like that, and it's at that point that you can start upgrading. So I'm going to start at this end of the bass and just work my way this way because like I said I really have pretty much changed everything. So the first thing is the tuning pegs and these are hip shots ultralights and I don't know if you've ever played a bass that's got really stiff difficult to turn tuning pegs but that is one of the fundamentals of playing bass is to be in tune that's especially common on vintage basses um, another thing is that tuners can be really really heavy and as the name suggests these are light so by changing these um, I got tuning pegs that I could rely on on a gig or a session to get me bang in tune really quickly really reliably and they're also light. Sticking with the tuners, there's this hip shot extender that I've got here. Now I often play a uh, five string bass and I quite like the ability to go below E. And what this little lever does here is at the flick of it, you can, you can go lower. Now I've got this configured to D, but some of them I think you can even go lower. So if I was playing an E, but let's say I was playing something in, in D and I wanted the low D. So that's really great. You can just flick it back there and you're in ear again. And it holds its tune really surprisingly well. So moving on, you have something that a lot of cheap basses skimp on and that's the nut. Now the nut is there to hold the strings in line, but it's also a contact point for getting the, the resonance of the vibrations of the string through, through the neck. So it's kind of a tonal thing more than you may think. It looks a very tiny kind of insignificant part of the bass, but it's not. So common replacements for the nut are bone or some other synthetic material, and even aluminium. We've got a couple of bases with aluminium nuts. And what that does is, the aluminium ones in particular, when you're fretting a note and then when you play an open string, it doesn't sound too much different, because that's when the aluminium nut is, but you'll be so surprised at the tonal difference that the nut can play and sustain. So. This entire neck is also new, and that's something you do. I've seen people with Fender Precisions that have that kind of a thick and wide neck where they want a bit more of a fast, slimmer neck. So, you know, a common thing to do is to replace a Precision neck with a Jazz neck. And makers like Warmoth and even Fender license necks that you can, you can make to replace. Um, Necks have different numbers of bolts at the back. This has got a three bolt, and I just found a neck that fit into this. And it looks great. I really like the Geddy Lee base that's got these kind of white blocks, so that's a visual reason why I wanted this. Maple, this one came with a rosewood, but maple has a brighter tone, and that's what I was after. So it's a tonal thing, and it's a visual thing. And that was a big, big upgrade to this base. All my bases are fitted with Dunlop strap locks, and I really, really like these ones. Now. The, I guess the, the con of having this is that you, if you've got multiple bases, they all have to have this in if your strap has got the proprietary hardware that that comes in with. But you just push it through there and through here and it, it's never let me down ever. And actually, if you forget your strap, you can, you can put a normal strap around here. So that's a good upgrade. Even the, the pit guard here, the scratch plate, is an upgrade because there was a bit of damage to the old one. But this could be a very visual thing if you like the colour of, you know, a, a sort of red tortoiseshell one, 
against the sunburst, then you can go for that. Pickups, that's a huge thing. Pickups and electronics on a base are a huge, huge upgrade. And these are bare knuckle pickups. And it just they just sound better than the pickups I had before. Just gave a little bit more output, a bit more power. And, you know, if you want a sort of rockier metal sound, you can go for pickups that have more of that sound. And if you want a kind of James Jameson type sound, Fender do a great 63 um, reissue pickup and you can put those those in. That's if you've got a P bass. If you've got a jazz bass, there are there are loads of different jazz bass pickups that you can put in as well. Another huge upgrade is the bridge. Now this is a badass two bridge and a little bit like the nut. I mean, it's obviously it's where the strings anchor into the end of the bass and that's really, really to do with the sustain of the bass. And the bridge that this had in previously was was very very flimsy and and it looked cheap and it sounded a bit cheap so that that's a big thing for tone the bridge and then is it finally yeah i guess it is finally i had a preamp put into this so this is a null preamp and again you can get tons of different types aguilar do a great one sadowski do a great one um this allows the bass to be active and passive. And that was a big thing for me. If you push this knob up, it's in passive mode. I'll just play quickly. If I push this in. I've got that set so it's got a little bump on the on the bass and the treble, which is what an active circuit does. It's got two batteries in the back and you can control the EQ. And so I often run it in passive mode, but just by pushing this button down, I've kind of got another tone just very quickly there. Um, and you can get all kinds of modifications further to that. I've got one here, if I put this in passive mode. It's a little subtle, but it rolls off some of the highs. And so, the idea is to make it sound a tiny bit more p bassy but I've got a, a good luthier I know who can do tricks like that. And I recommend that you find someone that can help you with this. I mean, by all means, look on YouTube to, to work out how to do this yourself. But I gave the professionals the job of, especially the neck, um, of changing all these things for me because I wasn't very confident doing it myself. Actually, that brings me on to the point, the back of the neck was kind of sanded down a little bit to, to make it feel really smooth and satin-like and, and fast. And really, all of those modifications have turned this bass into a, into a decent bass, into one that I, I really enjoy playing, almost like a custom bass, because I was able to change everything I wanted to change. Um, perhaps it's easy to change just for the sake of it, and this bass is kind of my Frankenstein bass that I test things out on, but I'm really happy with it now. And if you have a bass that maybe quite, doesn't quite give you the output you want, then you may want to consider a preamp or just pickups with higher outputs. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you got something from that and do subscribe for more bass lessons.